So thank you everybody for joining tonight. You know, we wanted to just have a training um, and I'm so glad to introduce the gentleman that'll be helping me with this as well. Um, we wanted to have a training on utility bills, maybe asking some good trigger questions right now to spark interest in a proposal, asking the right questions to get the bill, uh, knowing what to look for on the bill, and we'll go over some of those basics with you right now. So I'll set up the agenda and then introduce our, one of our speakers here. So thanks again for being on tonight. The agenda is gonna be how to get someone interested in solar, how to just have a few key points on that conversation right now in your day-to-day pre-qualification call uh, with yourself or a mentor, how to get the bill. A big important thing here, what names to put on the agreement? Is it the name on title? Is it the name on the utility bill? How do you put those names in so we don't cause delays and other things? Um, we're gonna go through a few utility bills across California, Texas, and Florida, and even Nevada. And we'll kind of just wrap it up and then uh, we'll open it up for a Q&A here. So I hope you find this time to be useful and beneficial. It's a very exciting time for power. We have a huge call Saturday, like you all know. Um, you know, I'm just very humbled to be on this team, to have you all on, to share this knowledge, to be in the renewable energy space. There's no better time. Power was built for this uh, time that we're going through right now. And renewable energy will be one of the biggest shifts in our lifetime, hands down. Platform economy, electric cars, the demand for electricity will rise, temperatures are rising, Mandates and requirements to go solar are rising. Federal incentives are going away. You don't even have to sell this thing. You're just presenting renewable energy that's better for our planet. So I hope that gets you excited. I hope you know you're in the right place. You're with the right team. You're with the right people. Saturday will be very exciting. And I want to introduce... Uh, a good friend of mine, Charles Thompson, I've hung out with a few times now. He is an energy veteran for 20 years. He's been selling solar, I think now 10 years. Um, he's been a mentor to me. He is a level above me. He's taken the time to review my proposals that I record and I send him and he gives me very good input. And there's no person that I've done that with before. It's extremely valuable. Uh, really just blessed and humbled to be on his team and be a part of this movement. So Charles Thompson with that, why don't you get us going here? Thank you, JB. And I, uh, I am equally as honored and humbled to not only uh, have developed a friendship with you, but to be working with you with your background, phenomenal track record. It's great to see how things are just really starting to, to grow and blow up in your business. You know, you never know, you with, with JC and then the, the people that JC has brought and your other other teams with Robin and everybody else you never know that that how, how this happens one person changes the entire dynamics of your business and that's all it really takes sometimes so if you're looking at this if you're new getting into power we're going to share some things with you to set you up for success but also know that just just keep introducing people to use the platform and at some point it's just going to click. Somebody's going to come into your organization or, or some people are going to come into your organization and it's going to develop a whole life of its own. It puts you on a path of six to mid six figure passive income. That's, it's, it's there, it's achievable, it's doable, it's already happening for multiple people in the company and we're doing nothing different than what we're coaching about here today. So things that I'm going to share with you are things that I've learned by not only stub my own toe and skin my own shins, but help seeing other people do that and to help you avoid that. So the key here is to really set yourself up for success. So if we go to the, the next slide, we'll talk about the, the way to really kind of get yourself in. We're going to do a deeper dive on this on Saturday. But really, the, the first thing is you've got to start to build a relationship, build a level of trust and confidence with the homeowner. And this is really a great way to start. And these are just kind of random samplings and questions. You've got you to see the flow of the conversation. Uh, 
you know, nowadays, the obvious opening question is, how's everything going? How are you handling things with COVID? Just to, you don't have to say much after that, just listen. Um, if, if that doesn't really get the connection, then you can get into a, a really popular one I like is Ford. Talk a little bit about the family. Talk a little bit about what's happening in their job. Talk about what's happening and in, in how are they surviving? They, you know, they used to go to the gym all the time. What are you doing? You know, what about that vacation? I know you had a vacation plan. So if these are people you know, then approach it from the angle of what you know about them, right? Family is the easiest one to get connected to. There's some great follow-up questions. Are the kids stuck at home with you? Uh, you know, how's the, how's the weather? How you how you dealing with the hot temperatures? You seeing your bill going up? You seeing more electricity? It really just getting them to talk. And a lot of this comes down to the active listening side of what you do. So when you start asking these probing questions, your goal is to get them to to start sharing. And as they start to share, then you're starting to rebuild perhaps rapport or the, the relationship. And if it's a new relationship, it's really not that much different except the context, right? You're not able to talk about what you already know about their family, what you already know about their job. That's how you can dive in a little bit. Tell me a little bit about your family. Just really use those as probing ways to get them. When you get into the expense side of things, this is where people haven't even started to feel the outcome of what we're getting right now, and you're going to be able to find that here pretty soon. You know, how are you dealing with things? Uh, you know, you, could you could you find a way to save more money on your bills? Do you have concerns about the rising cost of energy, about what's happening? And all those will lead you into that transition question. Because any of those answers you're going to know at any given time, whether you will now want to transition to, have you ever considered solar? Sh shut up and wait for the response. Or what are your thoughts about solar? These are just really good transition points to be able to get to the next step, which the next step is to, to get the qualifying questions out and then obviously to get the electric bill. And all you need is that bill to be able to see that. So on the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, kind of how to probe into what we're looking for. I call it the pre-qualification, setting yourself up for success by getting the electric bill. Don't take the path of, you know, you don't think a bill is necessary. Can we build a proposal without a, a bill? Yeah, we can. But should we? No, we shouldn't. Because it's going to, first of all, be a guess, or some might say a swag. But most importantly, you don't have the customer's real buy-in on what we're doing. They don't have any commitment to you. They haven't really demonstrated that they are willing to work with you. And if you're going to set yourself up for success, then Make sure you're getting the customer to follow you that along the pathway. And what you want to get into is a conversation about, well, let's even see if you're else. So you ask that question. Have you ever considered solar? Yeah, it was too expensive. Yeah, it was just, what was that? Well, you know what? Let's just see if you're even eligible. So this isn't even going to be a, a consultation, but if you have about 10 minutes, let me ask some questions. Let me see if you're eligible. Or if they don't have that time now, set up the second call. Set up the discovery call before you want to take the time to build a savings report or what, as some people call it a proposal. And when you're in there, you explain what it is you're going to do. We need to look at how much energy you're using on an annual basis. That's going to tell us the size of the system. That's going to tell us how much it's going to cost. That's going to tell us how much we're going to be able to save you when we know how much you're actually paying. So that's the second thing is to look at how much you're actually paying for your energy so we can show you the economic proposition. The reason for this is there's 130 million single family homes. Currently only 90 million of those are eligible. So if you're one of the 40 million who are not eligible, I don't wanna waste your time. So let's let's figure this out now. And the third thing we do is to look at your home. If it's eligible. So I can do the third thing, Mr. Homeowner, Ms. Homeowner. I just need you to help me. Looks like JC got unmuted. Um, I just need you to help me with the first two. And that is the easiest way is just to get me a copy of your electric bill. With that electric bill, I'll be able to know what your usage is. I'll be able to know the economic proposition. And I'll be able to see if I can even help you go solar. So pause on that. If you don't have the confidence to do that, this is where you need to spend most of your time initially is asking the right questions. And we're going to talk in a little bit about what you should look for once you get that bill. But the goal is that bill is really the keys to the kingdom, if you will. It's the keys to knowing if this homeowner is eligible and to make sure they have the accurate address and make sure you have their accurate name 
the bill says a lot on there that you don't have to necessarily have to tell the homeowner, but that's where you're going to go back to the conversation we have in a minute. What name goes on this lead and those type things. So that electric bill is critical. Sometimes people, if they don't really know you, they might have a pushback and say, oh, I'm not really comfortable sending the bill. Not a problem. What part is you're not, you're not comfortable with me actually paying your bill? Is that what you worry about? Just kind of smile about it, laugh about it. That's the worst thing I could do with your bill. And then if it comes down to it, they say, well, I just really don't want you to see certain information. Well, block out whatever information you're sensitive about. Because I don't, what I really need to know is how much you're using, how much you're paying. If it comes down to it, that's your backup plan. You're still going to need that ultimately. But if it really takes that kind of calm them down, if that is the case, then just use it as your backup. Black out what you don't want me to see and go ahead and submit a bill. The other thing, if you have time during this discovery call, is to kind of get into the probing questions. So you, you, you've got them participating, right? If they, especially when, if they text you a copy of their electric bill while you're talking with them, you've got them involved. You happen to know what the rating is of your electric panel. Most people have no idea. Well, there's something you can help me in advance, if you can, um, take a picture and just get, get onto your main panel. Just give me one picture, step back in your main panel, take a picture about three or four feet back. If you can, zoom up on the main breaker that's typically on the top or it's on the bottom and snap a shot of that as well. What that'll do is help me make sure that if there's anything that we have to look at to upgrade your electrical system, we'll know that in advance. You happen to know how old your roof is, what type of roof you have. So ask those kind of probing questions to see what they have. There you go. There's a, a great thing. If you are on a discovery Zoom, then you can show them the picture. Otherwise, you can take this. I have a, a screen capture of this, and I'll text it to them, just like this. So you could screen capture this off of one of the decks and send them this picture and say, here are the three pictures that I need you to send to me. Super simple. Put the onus on them. Again, the more that they can participate, in this conversation with you, the more that you're developing that confidence, that level of trust, rapport all along the way. And if you continue that process, that's really the foundation of online selling, which is what we're doing nowadays. That is really important to your ratios of being able to secure a 50 to 80% closing ratio. And you can do that if you set yourself up properly. Now that you get the questions answered, you can transition into, you know, you're not going to get them to tell you their credit score necessarily. That's not the goal. The goal would be, have you considered whether you would be looking into financing for your system where we're trading one bill, which is a loan payment for the one that you're currently using to rent your energy. And if you can get into that asset and liability conversation, great. If it's premature to do that, then don't do it. You got to know where the conversation is going. You got to feel the energy of the person you're speaking with. But the simplest thing you can say is our lenders, we have the best lenders in the industry and we have really moderate credit terms. If you're anywhere between 650 and 699, all they wanna know is that you have a moderate debt to income ratio. If you're over 700, they're gonna approve you automatically for anything that we need up to $100,000, which we don't need that obviously. So do you think that's gonna be an issue for you? Anything over 650? No, no, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Do you think you'll be over 700 or between 650 and 699? And the reason you wanna do this now is when it comes down to getting an actual contract done, you'll know that this is gonna to go to a potential of a cosigner. As the beauty is, we'll look at in a minute here is, particularly Lonetile and Sunlight, they're very, very good about having people who aren't on the title actually become a cosigner. So if you, if you plant these seeds and know what you're getting, you're getting your intel, right? The more you know going into the presentation, the better job you're gonna do setting yourself up for success. You get these questions and say, look, great. Everything looks fantastic. It looks like we have what we need. It looks like you're eligible to go solar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my design team, now that I have a copy of your bill, I'm going to have them put together a savings report for us. And what we need to do is set up a time for about a 30 to 45 minute Zoom, where I can actually share that with you. It'll be a screen share. Have you ever used Zoom before? If you haven't, I'll go ahead and send you a video and walk you through how to, to set Zoom up on your computer. You might love it. You might find that you can start having conversations with your family members. Most of that's how I'm talking to my family now. It's all through Zoom. So uh, we'll, we'll do that. I'll, I'll kind of nail this down. I have a calendar. So I've got my calendar in front of me. Let me go ahead and look at it. I've got Tuesday or Wednesday, which is better, right? You can just get them involved in it, or you can shoot them your link and if you have one and have them just book a direct me in the calendar. 
I recommend Calendly. I live by it. I think JV does the same thing. It's fantastic. So on that 30 minute Zoom, we're going to share a lot of information. Is there anybody else that needs to be on that? Your, your wife, your husband, your partner, your significant other, anybody else that should be on there to be able to see the savings report that we're going to share with you? Great. Let's make sure that that is a convenient time for them as well. And on that call, I'm going to tell you about our referral program. By the way, you're, you're with SCE, Southern California Edison. Do they have a referral program when you help somebody, another homeowner, get electricity from them? No, of course not. We do. And I'll tell you all about that. You're going to love it. And then at the end of the, the educational portion, we'll show you the numbers. If they look good, we already kind of predetermined your house looks like it qualifies. Then we'll schedule a site survey to have somebody come out and actually take the physical measurements and make sure that everything lines up so we can help you transition to solar. So all of this conversation just needs to flow as you do this and get practiced and get natural about it. That's it. Once they feel that confidence, that tone, the inflection, the way that you're talking with a homeowner, they're going to get a level of peace of mind. I assure you, your cancellation rate is usually, if you use these approaches and other things that you'll learn on Saturday, your conversion ratios and your cancellation ratios are going to be unlike anything you've ever heard of in this industry. You'll at least enroll 50 to 80% of the homeowners you present to if you two-step it and set yourself up for success the way that you do. And you'll see 90 to 95% of those panels get installed. There's an occasional issue that comes up where we couldn't catch it during the the initial presentation and the site survey reveals some things that maybe derails the deal. That's about it. If you take this approach and you work with a homeowner in this manner, you're going to find that the conversion ratios and the stick ratios are going to be extremely high. And on the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about things that you do. So all of this has set you up. And if we can go to the next slide, we'll actually I'll show you how to make sure you avoid some of the potential pitfalls that people get into when they don't put in the right information. Oh, I forgot about, I added a, an energy you should slide. This is a good one. Again, building value, right? I'll get to that other slide here in a moment. This is continuing the conversation. Before getting into the actual numbers that we get to, talk a little bit about with them about what their needs are. If you have time, you, you've got to know whether you want to continue to capture information or whether enough is enough. Try your best to get more and more and more because you're going to have a lot of intel. That intel is going to help you. And you can get into any changes that you have coming up. Uh, anybody moving in? Anybody moving out? I know you're staying home a lot more lately. Is that is your energy usage consistent now or has it gone up a lot? And by the way, how long have you lived there? And then you're going to take that information about how long they live there and you're going to show them how much money they've been basically investing into the monopolized utility grid. And it's a very clever way to open their eyes to it. You're planning on moving in the next five, 10 years? It doesn't matter if they are, just capture that data. Uh, do you have any remodels coming up? Any new appliances? You're gonna replace a new heater, your air conditioner. All these are going to change patterns on the usage in the home. And the more you know about that, the better you're gonna do in designing the system that's gonna suit them. Not you, it's gonna help them. And then one of the questions I always look, do you wanna use more power? Is there a reason that you've been, you know, leaving that AC turned up as opposed to turned down or that heat turned down instead of up? Uh, or the things that you would like to be doing that you're not doing because you can't afford the energy. And then you plan to buy an electric car anytime in the, you know, the next six months or so. All of those values are going to be built into when you're going through the system design. You build in that conversation. So if you don't get it before coming into the second step, then you're going to do it in the second step while you're looking at the system with them. It's always better to reaffirm, hey, remember what we talked about, you've got a, you are planning on getting an electric car, the system has this capacity. Those are the whole kind of the context of why we do that. So now in the next slide we can transition to that I thought was this one is what names to put where. And this is really important. The electric bill typically is going to be the homeowner, but it isn't always the case, right? Uh, if it isn't, as you can see in the fourth bullet, then you can, you'll make that name edit in the actual electronic documents or your mentor will do that. But it's good to know that, right? Is it the homeowner who's on the electric bill or is that somebody else who is on the electric bill? But the name on the title of the home needs to be the one on the credit application. You can have the same name on the title low, but it should, it needs to be the same on the solar agreement as well. So everything has to line up 
And what you find in a lot of communities is people will have slang in their name or they may have two last names, particularly in, in some of the cultured names, you'll find that they'll have a, a Lopez, like a Juan Lopez, um, whatever the case may be. There's a really good place to go to check that out. It's neighborhood.com. I subscribe to that. I think, I don't know, $9.99 a month. If you have access to other sites, it's a really great place to go. You can search the address and it'll actually tell you the title record of that home. It'll show you the name that's on the title of the home. And that's what you want to make sure we have in the system so that it all matches up. And oftentimes when Lone Pal, for example, rejects a deal and they make it conditionally approved, it's because the name isn't matching up with the title or it isn't matching up with the credit report. If you find it on neighborhood.com, I've yet to have one get, get a conditional approval and have to provide an ID because I always put what is in neighborhood.com. And when you do that, you'll want to put that in the platform in power.com. And then whoever is the consultant or mentor on the deal would request a name revision on the proposal before you go and present it. You wanna have all this done, that's why the bill is critical to have because you're gonna know this information typically in advance. You wanna request the revision because these two systems don't necessarily talk to each other after the information is put in. So if you put something in power.com and it goes over into the solo proposal tool, it dumps that data over there. If you change it over here after, before, before it goes over here, you're good. You change it over here after you've submitted over here, then you have to request a revision. That's just a system issue until we're completely API integrated. And then at that point, that'll all kind of talk to each other going back and forth. That's why we have the platform. That's why we all pay licensing fees to be able to develop all that kind of technology. So that's kind of my, my in input that I wanted to get to today over and above the fact that there's things that we'll talk about on the bills. Jonathan's going to take quite a bit of that. But when we get to Texas bill, I want to talk about a very important topic called grid parity. And we'll jump into that in a minute. So JB, I'll refer to, defer to you, sir. Right on. Thank you for that, Charles. A lot of good information there. Um, you know, a few things that just to reinforce, getting the 12 months of usage is very important. Um, getting an electric bill, the, we have to have that to design a system. If they haven't been in the house for 12 months, work with your mentor. We have different criteria and metrics and square footage and questions and age of home and that we can give you an estimate of what that home will use based on our years of experience and hundreds and hundreds of homes that we've helped go solar. So otherwise, we do need the 12 months. Very important. Um, Great topics to bring up with friends right now that you mentioned, Charles. And just leverage uh, your mentor. Leverage me, leverage Charles. You know, my mentor manager has been doing this six years. He's helped hundreds of homeowners go solar. It's just going to take 20 minutes to, to go through it with you. And let us be the confidence in the questions initially. And then, uh, you know, one day you too or you already are doing that as well. So really good points there. Um, so I'm gonna go through a few bills, guys. I wanna just have you get familiar with the electric bills. Um, a few things to look at when we look at an electric bill. So this is SDG&E. If you are so lucky enough to have a customer in this area, it's one of the most expensive utilities in the country. And we have an account number up top, which we need to request documents. We can see that this bill was $304 and they only used 979 kilowatts. So if you're decent at math, we know that that's over 30 cents a kilowatt. $304 divided by 979 kilowatts, that's what was used between January and February. It says it right here, 979 kilowatts used. And we can see this lovely bar graph right here. February goes to 954 or something like that. So very quickly, we can see what January is, December is, November, October. This is good enough 
to enter the 12 months of usage. And if you upload this bill in the proposal, when you enter the lead, the designer a lot of times will look at this and input it for us and get very close, saving us a boatload of time. So always try to upload a bill or a 12 month graph if you have it, most bills do, into the lead utility bill section when you upload the lead. So 31 cents a kilowatt is insane and we have a 12 month chart. So those are two key things to look for. What are they spending? And do we know what they've been using the last 12 months? Here's the second page of the SDG and E bill. We have a meter number and an account number. We are good to request a agreement to sign with this. One other thing to point out on this bill, they are on what's called time of use. SDG and E has forced everyone to go to a time of use billing. There's on peak, off peak, summer, winter, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. The rate goes up a lot during the on peak. Um, so generally they do this to prevent peak grid times from being overloaded and make more money. SoCal Edison is forcing everyone by next year. PG&E is on the same path. And probably throughout the country, we'll start to see time of use billing become a normal thing here, guys. Um, and this is just a way for, again, for them to make more money. So always take a look at time of use billing and uh, some advanced level stuff. We can work with your mentor to discuss how solar works with time of use billing because south facing and west facing panels are very, very important when you have time of use with solar because we want the solar producing energy for that afternoon sun as much as possible. That four to nine window when the rates are higher with time of use. So to keep it simple, west facing, very, very good. South facing, very, very good um, when you're dealing with time of use billing. So that's San Diego. I don't care what price you sell your solar at, it's gonna be cheaper than what the utility is. So check out SDG&E. My personal favorite uh, where I have the most business is Southern California Edison. This is a friend's account. Again, he used 632 kilowatts, which was 20 kilowatt hours per day. On his highest month here, we see that he used 29 kilowatts per day. We can see in March of last year, he used about 19 kilowatts per day. So multiply that by 30 and you know what kilowatts was used in that month. Input this into the lead before we request a proposal and the designer will get very close to your monthly 12 month usage. If we divide $136 bill by 632 kilowatts, he's paying 21.7 cents a kilowatt hour. There may have been a one-time credit on this bill and perhaps not. So always look for credits and different things going on too. They, they could be on a discount plan. A care plan is very common if you ever see that care, C-A-R-E. Um, so there's different discounts out there as well. So he's on what's called a tier plan. He has not been forced to switch to time of use yet. They're only giving him 380 kilowatts in tier one, 19 cents, very simple. That used to be 15 cents two years ago, everybody. Tier two, now he's in the 25 cent range. And this isn't even summer, guys. Like imagine summer, he's gonna be living in tier two, 25 cents. Now, you want to build the pain, and your mentor will do this, or you'll, you'll do it during your presentation when you give the proposal. Did you know you're paying for a nuclear decommissioning charge? You know those San Onofre nuclear plants on the beach that don't work for nine years because Edison screwed up? Yeah, they charge you a little bit of money to decommission them and store nuclear waste there. Public purpose programs, yeah, they help people that get discounts and don't have good in, in, uh, 
income. So you have to help pay for those people. New systems, new poles, um, they can't take care of their towers that are sparking, they're causing fires. You have to help pay for their aging infrastructure. So you wanna build the pain. 381 kilowatts in tier two. Your neighbor was given 400 last month. This 380, they can change that on you. Check out your bill last month. It was 390. Check out your summer bill. You know, it was 400. So they're squeezing you in the winter because they know you're not using a lot of energy. And I'm, this is all facts, guys. This is, I'm not making this up. Like, build the pain. This was 15 cents two years ago. Tier two was 19 cents. And guess what? They're going to switch you to time of use next year. You think it's going to be better? You think you're going to get a discount? Heck no. So build the pain. This is a SoCal Edison bill, my favorite. Switching everyone to time of use by next year. Uh, cover a PG&E bill, Northern California. <clears throat> this is the 12-month chart. Uh, this is dollar amount. It gets a little bit more difficult to calculate dollar amount. On one of the other pages, there should be usage on a 12-month chart. This one's a little trickier. We have $117 delivery charges. And then on some bills throughout the country, you'll see a third party energy provider. You know, out here we have Clean Power Alliance or whatever. Um, that means that they are not a direct access customer. PG&E is using a third party company to provide them with some energy. Uh, usually it's from some clean sources because they're being mandated to switch some of their energy to clean. So they're using a third party company to provide that. Is it cheaper? No. Are they getting a discount? No. Is it sometimes more expensive? Yes. Will their rates continue to climb? What do you think? So $117 plus the $60 generation, we're not talking about gas here, is $177. And if we look at the next bill, we know they use 707 kilowatts, 25 cents a kilowatt hour. If you haven't noticed the trend, California is hella expensive. Um, so right here we can see in this billing cycle, they use 707 kilowatts between August 24th and September 24th. They are on a tier plan. Same thing, 316 kilowatts is allowed in tier one, and that's at 22.4 cents. Once you pass that mark, now we're in tier two, and in summer, I think there's probably a tier three as well. So not a pretty bill, and this is just for delivery, guys. This is just to deliver energy to the house. When you have solar on top of your house, how much delivery charges do you think there is? It's being straight put into the house. We're cutting out delivery entirely, which is one of the amazing things that solar does. You're paying off your power bank. Um, and then this is page two of the bill. So again, they're using a third party energy provider that's generating the, electri the electricity, giving it to PG&E. PG&E then delivers it to your house you see how the economics don't quite make sense. And we all know PG&E has these towers. They knew were sparking. They didn't fix them. Warming temperatures with winds caused fires. They pleaded guilty to, it's sad, like 55 deaths, guys, and millions and millions of dollars. And FEMA is going to have to help save them from bankruptcy, taxpayer dollars because they were neglecting their aging infrastructure, because they're delivering dirty energy for years and years to homeowners. I get really passionate about this part. I mean, it's true, just Google it. It's, it's crazy what we're seeing in our climate, in our weather, with the aging infrastructure. We have to have to get more solar panels on roofs and eventually batteries, and we can shut down coal plants. It's happening in Los Angeles. The more solar, the more batteries that are being installed, they can turn off a coal plant completely from operation. 
And then I'll go through one more here before Charles jumps in. Um, Roseville, California, got a few guys in Sacramento, Zach Haynes, Jarrett McAllister, really great guys. Um, this is a deal that Zach closed. He's on fire right now. So it was $163. We can see uh, right here, electricity was 163. And we can also see on the second page, his usage was 1090, which means it's about 15 cents a kilowatt hour. I prefer to help homes that are 13 cents or higher a kilowatt hour. If it's under 13 cents, Charles will touch on this, but we have to have a conversation that there's not necessarily savings, but you're doing a good deed for the planet and you're locking in your price and you're building value. But we, do, we wanna be ethical, we wanna set the right expectation. It might be a few dollars more. If they're below 11, 12, nine cents a kilowatt hour, depending on how you price out the system. So I like to do 13 cents or higher. It's gonna make um, good economics for solar. So this was a good deal that he sold. We have a 12 month chart again. We zoom into that, we can pull the numbers ourselves or the designers can pull it. We can see that this customer is on a tier plan. He gets 500 kilowatts in tier one. It's only 9.3 cents. Tier two, the price really jumps up. Summertime, it probably jumps up even more. So one advanced thing I'll throw at you, throwing a lot out there. There's something called tear shaving. Is it a good idea if the solar offsets 100% of this person's bill? Sure. What if we don't have the room for it on the roof? What if they only want 80% offset? Is that still a great, great value for the homeowner? Absolutely. Why? Because whatever the solar doesn't cover, they will most likely live in this tier one, right? Nine cents a kilowatt. I'm okay with them using 10 or 15 bucks a month at nine cents, as long as the solar takes care of the rest. Do we wanna offset 100%, 115% if possible? Of course. Roseville is very, very strict on 100% maximum offset. In Edison and PG&E and other territories, we can go up to 150% if we need to, but some utilities, you cannot go past 100%. And that's where working with a mentor and a professional is very important to prevent delays and issues and redesigns and things like that. So great bill here, great utility, um, not, not super dense for solar. So it's an opportunity to work inside of this utility and get people to go solar because rates are going up. They're having to work on their infrastructure. You Google any of these utilities names, Roseville Utilities Electric rates rising. Any utility, guys, find a news article, send it to the customer, put it in the presentation. You just customize a presentation, you're building the pain, you're showing them their rate increases. Um, so yeah, welcome to California's electricity bills. Charles, you wanna take over a, a Texas bill here? I'll be happy to uh, dealt with a few of those. And CPS, you're going to see CPS range anywhere from what you're seeing here, 9.8 to 12 cents. It's in, and I've really not found the exact rhyme or reason why it varies by home, but it does. To Jonathan's point, I, I use the term grid parity. So if you're dealing with somebody in Texas, you really have to look at what that kilowatt hour rate is. The good thing is, for us at least, that the rates have started to gradually go up. The, the generation charges they which they can't control by deregulated energy standards have increased by about 30 percent over the past two years i moved to dallas because of that so this homeowner if you look at 9.8 cents that's not that's not really at grid parity because grid parity is anywhere between 11 and 13 cents per kilowatt hour and what i mean by that is the cost of renting energy versus the cost of owning a power plant I call that grid parity. If you're above 13 cents, you're always going to come in in a better economic situation going solar. If you're below 13 cents 
and to 11 cents, you're going to be kind of close and maybe you're going to be paying a little bit more. If it's below this number, like 9.8, there's no way you're going to save that homeowner money unless they're paying cash for a system. This is where you get into a conversation. So in the discovery phase, I mean, that's one of the reasons I asked about, are you thinking about a cash deal? You think about financing. If you know this kilowatt hour rate is 9.8 cents, then you really want to have an adult conversation with someone. What are your goals of going solar? If their exclusive goal is to save money, then you've got to put a con this in the context with the homeowner. And this is where you want to get into the asset versus liability conversation sooner than later so that you don't go through a presentation to have the homeowner say, well, I thought I was going to save money. And now it's too late. You, you, so you're going to build the objection in the advance on the front side. So in this case, I would say, you know, JB, you got a great rate of energy, by the way. Congratulations for keeping that locked in. That's, you've done a fantastic job. Uh, have you thought about how you want to pay for solar? Are you, you looking at us just exchanging this bill that you're renting energy for a loan payment? Or are you thinking that you maybe have the liquidity to pay cash for system? And folks, 95% of the homeowners is financed. So you, you're asking that to get two things out. One, to get an idea of their credit score. All right, if we finance and the credit scores are going to be from 650 to 699, anything over 700, you're automatically approved. But when you include financing, the cost of producing energy is going to be a little higher for you, JB, for your first few years. So I, I'm not going to demonstrate to you year one that you're going to see savings. But what I am going to give you is I'm going to give you control of that cost. When we meet, I will show you how that rate has gone from 9.8 cents to from 8.6 cents over the last two years. So it's raising and it's going to continue to raise. Do you, do you think that the energy costs in the next 10 years are going to be higher than they are now or lower? Of course, it's going to be higher. You lived there for how many years? 10? When you moved in, was your energy cost lower or higher than it is now? So you're building framework, right? So th at this point, you said, well, it was lower and now it's higher and now it's going to go higher. Exactly. So my goal when I present the numbers to you, I want you to see that you're going to lock that rate in for the rest of your life. And think about this, JB. Look at what you're paying for a gallon of gas right now. What do you, what's the last tank you filled up at? Oh, 23. Right. Okay. So if you could lock in your gallon of gas today at a dollar 23 for the rest of your life, would you take advantage of that? Of course I would. Well, then I'm going to show you how to lock in your cost for a kilowatt hour because that's how they bill you. I'm going to show you how to lock that in for the rest of your life. You'll never have to worry about that rate going up. It just went up 20% over the last two years. Show them data when you do the actual numbers, but tell them what you already know of this. And then you look at each bill very much similar. So this is, this is along the same line, 9.8 cents. However, in this particular bill, I love looking at the fact that they do have a tiered plan. Right? It bumps it up by another penny if they're using over 1,000 kilowatt hours. So if you look at their bill, this maybe this month was only 779 at 9.8 cents, but look at the other bills and that's where they're paying 12 and 13 cents a kilowatt hour. So this one, I'm not going to be so concerned about. Yeah, it's 9.8 cents right now, but I'm going to show them, but it's, your average is really going to be more around 12 cents a kilowatt hour because of the usage and still have that adult conversation about the, the cost of energy, rising rates, in the PowerPoint presentations that each of you should have access to, and I'm going to paste that link on Saturday's training as well, I have a chart that shows what the 2018 rates are, and I educate them. This data is perfect. You'd be able to show them, here's what it was in 2018, here's what it is now. Look at what the rate increase is. Boom. Now you get them into that control, predictability, the rising rates, they know it's going to happen, the pain of the bill, everything that JB talked about earlier put you in the control position, but the more you do that on the front end, and I know it may sound complicated, but listen, if you want to spend an extra 15 minutes on the front end to not spend an hour on the back end wasting your time, that's the key. If you spend that 15 minutes on the front end, you're setting yourself up for a 60, 70, 80% close ratio on the back end. Or the hard part all of us have to deal with is I'm not going to present this deal. Because this just doesn't make sense. I'm not going to waste an hour of my time trying to convince somebody on something that I don't believe is a good deal for them. That's the psychological play that you're going to find yourself in, and all in a very, very good way. Okay?
So that's my two cents, JB, or my 9.8 cents in this case. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Thanks, Charles. Um, you know, on kind of on that note, I wonder what you think, but we have one last bill here and then we'll, we'll open it up. Um, you know, I think some of us more senior reps, we don't always focus on savings. I think that that's uh, kind of a more of a, a newer newbie kind of person rep that just focuses on savings. You know, when, when you go through the slide deck that Charles have, that I use, you build the pain, you show them everything, renewable energy, our planet, and you just say, this is 120 a month. And you just, like Charles says, you just shut up. I don't, I don't care if they just paid 90 bucks in their winter bill. Maybe they're thinking of their $300 summer bill. I, I don't know. But what I'm offering is locked in for 120 bucks. Do I know what the utility is going to do next year? No. Do I know what they're going to do in 10 years? I, I can't tell you with certain accuracy, but what I can tell you is that we're selling control and predictability and a set bill adding value to your home. So I don't always focus on savings. I think that taking that out of your vocabulary uh, may benefit you depending on the person, depending on the conversation, but it's not always about that. I just want to stress that. Um, one last bill here, guys, Las Vegas, um, Maurice, I beat you to it. So Las Vegas, Nevada Energy, pretty good bill to, to work with. You know, it's hot out there for four, five, six months out of the year. And this bill was one of the lowest bills that this gentleman had, $91, but he used 684 kilowatt hours. So 13.3 cents. Now, if we look at June, July, and August, this guy's in a world of hurt. His bill is tripling. And I think his monthly payment we offered him was like 120 or 126. And his friend has solar and five people in his neighborhood have had solar. And we looked at the GPS satellite view and our system is pretty similar in size to the other neighbors. So this was a, a great proposal we did yesterday, actually, in Nevada Energy, Las Vegas. Again, 12 month chart, do the math, 13.3 uh, cents here. And we can see that there's a tier plan going on with a lot of different charges and fees and green and power finance. They're all based upon kilowatt hour consumption, folks. That's the thing to make sure you know. All these miscellaneous charges are based upon how much energy that they're renting from the monopolized utility. We'll eliminate all that if we, we get them on solar at 100%. Exactly. The only charge that's not off of the kilowatt, guys, that's a locked fixed charge, basic service charge, $12.50. Yep. So always remember, the utility generally has a fixed minimum customer charge. Like if you want a vacation for 30 days and you didn't use a single thing, you would still have to pay $12.50. That charge can range... To from twelve fifty to maybe twenty two dollars, depending on where you're at. I want to add something on that, JB, because if you look at Texas, which is a deregulated energy market in most of the areas, exception being CPS and co-ops. Okay, anything in the main grid, the Encore grid, and in Houston, for example, is deregulated. So in those markets that are deregulated, I always do what I can to switch the homeowner to another supplier. Uh, Green Mountain Energy and Reliant are the best. And what you'll find, if you can get them on Green Mountain Energy and Reliant, they're going to have a zero bill. That's the way you get a zero bill in Texas. If you're in CPS or if you're in a co-op, as JB pointed out, you're going to have a base service charge. But if you get them to convert over to Reliant or Green Mountain Energy in the deregulated energy markets, you wipe out the bill completely. Good to know. Well, I think that about wraps it up as we're coming to the top of the hour, guys. Um, I'm going to turn off the recording here in just a sec, and we'll open it up for some Q&As, chat room, and um, possibly unmute yourself as well. Again, I just want to say thank you for taking the time tonight to educate yourself on some of the bills, some of the right questions as we're coming into the summertime. We're coming into hot weather. It's 80s, 90s in California right now. I'm sure it's hot in Texas and Florida. 
We're coming into the end of the year, 26% tax credit this year. You don't get your system installed this year, you're getting 22% next year. Then it's gone the year after that. That's thousands of dollars on the tables, guys. We're coming into the home stretch. Q3, Q4, summer pain, summer bills, end of year tax credit push. There is no better time. I'm telling you in my six years, Charles can attest, last year, this year, next year, you have to take advantage of what's in front of you, the urgency, the tax credit, and the summer bills coming. So um, Charles, any last closing words? Just to reiterate, and great job, JV, putting this together, and thank everyone for participating. But I want to reiterate Saturday. So that's going to be more of a, a three prong event. One, we're going to start with a business presentation for anyone who's a guest, and there should be a lot of guests on that call. And always participate in the business presentations because you get comfortable picking up the language on how to, how to communicate this, and that's really how you master it. When I first started in power, I was on every business presentation, every single one for months, every single conference call, listening, picking up the key terms and ways to communicate. Second thing you're going to get is an announcement from the other JV, Mr. Bud, who's going to talk about a very exciting promotion that's going to be put on in front of us on Saturday. And then the third is we're going to dive into the, the training behind how to communicate that message how to, how to take that new promotion that we have and communicate that to prospects. Deeper dives on some of the, the dialogue. We won't get into the build training because this is great stuff, but it's going to really help you hone in some of the skills in communicating. Awesome. Thank you, Charles.